in all of my travels, there's one thing I haven't been able to escape from. That's been pain. Rather, I've grown a much more intimate friendship with pain, given the right blind of fellow travelers who've joined on my journey to the most kind of painful experience I've had so far, which has been scoliosis. And scoliosis is this abnormal spine curvature where your spine ends up looking like a C or an S. And if the growth continues on, it starts pushing on your lungs and surgery is needed. And the scary part of surgery is that if anything goes wrong, it, require, it might even get you to the possibility that you become paralyzed or you lose your ability to see or even lose your ability to walk. It was a very, very scary possibility. And I, I didn't take this very well. I remember being 14 years old at the time that I was diagnosed this and feeling like my whole world got shattered into pieces. Because at that age, it was a very crucial year for me to determine my future because I was this close to finishing high school. I entered university around the age of 15 and got to graduate from my first master's degree around the age of 19 years old. But at the time, I didn't even think graduation was possible or if I could even keep up with the pace that I was going to, towards. And I remember wearing a brace to try to maybe slow down the growth, but it didn't help. And it, was, it got even difficult to put on a t-shirt. And so it felt like my whole world just stopped. And it was a really, really dark time in my life. The clinical, the clinical psychologist Peterson, he says that we all go through something very similar. Maybe it's not scoliosis, but he says that we go through the journey to the underworld. That we go there all the time, actually. Especially when we feel like our future or what is happening in our lives is completely shattered. And he argues that the more radical the, the, the change, the more pain that comes with it, so it's not surprising to see people kind of run away from it. And I would add that there's also people who lean into their pain. And you could even say graduate from their pain. Like for instance, in Japan, in certain Japanese idol groups or companies, not all, uh, but some, they, instead of somebody saying, oh, she's leaving the company, they would say, oh, she's graduating from the company kind of acknowledging that that person has maximized his or her potential and now he's going on to something bigger. So it's not a goodbye, it's, it's more of a see you later. And the same in some way could be applicable to pain because we do end up graduating from it and we start building this, this muscle. And this muscle, kind of the whole training started building for me when I went through recovery because I, after opting for surgery, getting out of surgery, you, you're, like a, you're like a baby, you're like a newborn, because you have to relearn everything. You learn basic things that you haven't even thought twice about. Like, I learned like, how to stand up, and when I tried, I vomited a couple of times because it was really painful. You also like, learn how to take your first steps. And it was really hard as I have very puffy eyes and I could barely, could barely stand up. And you also learn how to go up and down the stairs after, after a long blood transfusion because I had lost a lot of blood after surgery. And, and even shower sitting down, which seems harder than it, than it looks. And, and some, sometimes even at, like, asking for help going to the bathroom, which at the age that I was going through was pretty embarrassing to ask for help in that sense. And so this experience was, again, the most darkest moments of my life, but it is in those hard days when you feel extra gratitude for the people around you, right? And Martin Luther King describes this very well when he says, only in the darkness can you see the stars. And I think it's a very beautiful way of seeing the world, but at the time of 
like my experience, I really didn't get this fully. I, I didn't want to be a burden to, to, to anybody. So before surgery, I would tell everyone, I don't want to be a burden. I don't want to be a bother. I even told my mom, please, please don't come visit me in the hospital. And as I was entering the operation room, like I think my grandmother fa finally FaceTimed me and she basically said, hey, Ellie, it's not a solo ride. But she said it in much nicer words. She said, Ellie, the reason that we are here on earth is to connect the best people we can in the best ways we can, including ourselves, and to see where that can go. And I still believe in this principle and this philosophy to this very day. And I knew that this wasn't going to be the last or first pain experience I, I will have. And I, and I thought about this concept or this topic as something I really, really wanted to continue learning about throughout my life. So after this whole experience, I decided to marry Peruvian symbolism with Japanese expressions to kind of rethink pain in different shades and colors. You might say, wait, why, why Japanese expressions? Well, um, I have had the honor and privilege of calling Japan my home for the last couple of years. And as I learned Japanese, there are certain words and phrases that I immediately recognize. And there's also in the Japanese language, uh, when, when someone is speaking to someone, you can get to know the power relation and the power dynamic, maybe even the closeness that exists between both people. So it's a great marker to know that. And I'm sure there's a, the, the same phenomenon stands for other languages too. And why Peruvian symbolism? Because we go back home every year, back to the States and Peru, for, to see my grandparents. And in Peru, you kind of see symbolism everywhere in the food and the jewelry and the architecture. And when you combine both of them, the, the very first thing that came to mind was, was the Chacana. And it's this very Andean Inca Peruvian symbol, very precious that has many interpretations. And the interpretation I'll, I'll give today is of one of, of energy and what it symbolizes. And this was the same sign that my grandma sees, like is very a, a big fan of, and it, she believes that this protects you and it holds great qualities. And if you look into this a bit more, it's kind of divided into four different parts and you see four kinds of people emerge, which I think brings a unique perspective into pain and the lens of pain. Because the more, more I got to share my story, the more other people shared with me and I got to see four different sides of pain, which I'll share with you today. And I kind of divided it into these 12, well, th these are the 12 qualities that, that it's divided in, but I divided it into four qualities mainly. Because you have, I would say, the gambate person, the daijobu person, the girigiri person, and the chutumate person. So I'll explain to you today what they, what they all mean and what they all possess. So first is the gambate person, which in Japanese means like, you can do it. People say like, gambate kudasai. And they're like magicians because they can turn something very negative into something very positive really fast. And the, the more I learn about this is that they see their pain through the lens of love, trust, and connection. And in turn, these are the same qualities that they radiate because they, they love because of who you are. They're lovable people in general. They trust. You trust them because they walk the talk and you can connect with them, not at, just at the level of pain, but intellectually, professionally, spiritually, at all levels. And I ask you, is this a lens that you've ever seen your pain from? And who could this be, who could this be for you? Maybe it's a mentor, maybe a coach, maybe somebody spiritually in your life. And for me, that was, that was my middle sibling, Angie, uh, because as I was recovering and I would try my best to speed up the process and I, I would be very sad to only make three steps instead of four, but she would say, no, 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 Ellie, like, this is great. This is, this is more than what you did yesterday. Like, let's go celebrate. And she taught me the, the very importance of gradual improvement and to see my pain from that particular lens. And the next person is the chotomate person, uh, which in Japanese means like, wait a minute. It's one of my favorite Japanese words. And the reason they're chotomate is because often they, 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 they love to hear what you're, you're going to be doing, but they're also like chotomate, like let's wait a minute, let's process. And they give you feedback, constructive feedback. 
And so they see, le they, they see also pain through the lens of acknowledgement, protection, and awareness, which is the next quadrant on the chakana. And in turn, you recognize them because they, th these are the same qualities that they project. So they acknowledge hard work, they protect you from self-doubt, and they also make you aware of your limitations in a good way. And I ask you, is this the lens that you've ever seen your pain from? Could this be you? Or could this be a running buddy or a professor that you know? And for me, that was my mom. Uh, after surgery, I kind of relied on a lot of extensions after school at the point that I really didn't need them. And she would sit down one day and she said, Elizabeth or Ellie, are you ready? Are you ready for the tough talk? She's like, are you truly being honest with your teachers and yourself when you're getting extensions when you no, no, no longer need them at this point? And she was, she was totally right. In a very loving way, she said this. And she's taught me the very importance of honesty and, and making sure that I constructively seek feedback wherever I go. And I, I make it a, a big treasure in my life. And the third type of people within the quadrant is the daijubu people. And in Japanese, daijubu means like, it's all right, it's okay. Obviously, it depends on the tone of it, but the, the, they, they really see pain through this lens of happiness, passion, and self-expression. And in turn, you recognize them because these are the same types of energies that they radiate. You know, they're, they're happy to some extent by not sweating the small stuff and maybe finding the positive in, in a really hard experience. They are passionate about their goals and they're also very expressionate with their emotions. And I ask you, is this a lens that you have ever seen your pain from? And who could this be for you? Could this be your gym friends or maybe a language tutor? And for me, that was my dad because I would be very embarrassed to wear the back surgery, so sorry, the back spine, but he would say, Ellie, like, why are you embarrassed? Like, these are, this is great, these are abs of steel, and now I can finally teach you how to dance marinera, because you're always so busy. And I would say, like, Dad, but, but I could barely stand up. And he said, like, it's okay, it's okay, I'll find on YouTube the version where you would do the sitting down. And even though that didn't go well, he still taught me the very importance of not taking things too personal and also maybe finding the humorous side of pain in some way. And it's something I carry on with me every day. And last but not least, a very important part of this whole idea is giri giri people. And giri giri people in Japanese means like barely, like you've barely caught the train or you're barely making it. But for me, it gives me the feeling that it's like that they're constantly on edge and they're constantly doing something. They're extremely productive and they, they see their pain maybe through the lens of responsibility, productivity and accountability. And in turn, you recognize them because again, these are the ones, the qualities that they project on. They have a high sense of responsibility when they commit, some, they commit to something, maybe despite going through a painful experience. They're accountable for their mistakes and they're very productive with their goals. And I ask you, is this a lens that you've seen your pain from? Or you've channeled your pain towards? And if not, who could this be for you? Could it be a startup partner? Maybe a dancing teacher? And for me, it was my youngest sibling. Her name is Kimberly. And she would be a really, she's an extremely busy person. But despite being very busy, she would go and collect my assignments and make sure that they're like ready for the deadline and she would give them to me. And she would say like, Ellie, this is due tomorrow at noon. Please don't procrastinate, winky face. And, and because she was a couple grades lower, I would say, Kimberly or Kim, is there anything I can do for you as a trade-off? And she said, no, 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 it's okay. She said, like people would know if you help me because we have very different handwriting. But apart from that, like, I'm okay, I'm just happy, I'm, I'm of use. And maybe in the future, you could be of use to someone else. And, and she really taught me that the value of, despite having a very busy schedule, despite being very busy with whatever you're doing, still finding the time to support others in very painful moments and in very creative ways. And so there you have it. Four lenses to be pain from with four amazing people that I have the honor to call my family. 
you have to go back to the chotto matte the daiju and the giri giri and the reason i'm here to share this idea with you is because i genuinely believe that if we process and see our pain through these four types of lenses it deepens our friendship with pain in a way that it has never done before at a very conscious and unconscious level and these qualities that you see around become second nature to us making it easier to connect with anyone at at the speed of light and remember that even though for me it's four 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 different forms of lenses you might have your own category you may have a hontoni or a a, a naruhodo person who sees pain maybe through articulating it out loud or process it differently and also on the flip side it could be a great guide to understand how you could support others in painful moments maybe the person that you really want to support has comes from a gambatte family has gone with a, uh, to school with a bunch of giri giri people and maybe at this point needs more daijobu daijobu lens uh, daijobu lens and so you can learn a joke or you can brush up on your humor and it will go a long long way and i close by saying that physician sociologist nicolas christokis he concurred when he said that we are all first of all we're not solitary creatures and second of all we are deeply deeply embedded in the lives of others and it's very easy to forget that and to engage in an optimistic fallacy where we think that all we have to do is study the individual and the chakana for me reminds me to go beyond the individual for myself and for others at very painful moments of time so i ask you What is your chakana? What is the lens that you'll choose to examine your pain from, especially when times get tough in your life? Thank you very much. Arigatou gozaimasu.